Hi and welcome back. So it's blood test time again. I've had my two separate blood tests taken at two specific hospitals. Um, let's jump in and look at the results of the blood test I had taken in November of 2023. Let's quickly take a look at the supplements I was taking when I had these blood tests done. Please don't skip ahead because some things have changed. NMN 1.5 grams a day, no change there. Trans resveratrol, one gram a day on the non-training days. So I take it on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. I class a non-training day as a day that I'm not in the gym lifting weights. TMG, trimethylglycine, 1.5 grams a day. I'm up to 1,000 milligrams of metformin, 500 in the morning, 500 at night. Remember the last blood test I had done, I was on 500 per day. My A1C shot back up. Vitamin D3, 5,000 international units per day. I used to be on 10,000 on a Sunday and a Wednesday. I stopped doing that because my last test, now that I'm here in the Philippines, I'm out a lot more in the sun. Um, it had pushed it up out of, the, out of the sufficient range towards toxic. Not that I think um, being near the toxic is going to be a problem in the short term. Vitamin K2, 120 micrograms a day, MK7 version. Magnesium, 250 milligrams a day, L3 and 8 version. Hyaluronic acid, 400 milligrams. That's up from 200 milligrams of high molecular weight hyaluronic acid. I saw a comment on the Do Not Age Twitter page. Um, a lady said she'd gone up to 400 milligrams a day. In between four and six months, she'd noticed improvements in her skin, plumpness, etc. So I'm doing that. Um, I think I'm about a month and a half in. So another four or five months to go. Uh, quercetin, 2.4 grams a day. And that's on the first, second and third of each month. Fisetin, 2.4 grams a day. And again, first, second and third of each month. And there's a link in my supplement list in the description of the YouTube video that explains why I take this, this big dose three days a week. Dry parsley, one tablespoon um, of dry parsley per day in my yogurt. Certs Activator, 800 milligrams. Dim, 600 milligrams. And that's 200 in the morning, 200 at about 11 to 12 o'clock, and then 200 when I take my metformin, about 9.30 or 10 when I, when I go to bed. Glynac, 800 milligrams a day. And I've started to take, again, creatine, five milligrams a day. And what I do is, when I've had my last blood test, I then take five milligrams a day for one month. Then I've got two full months off um, and then I get my next blood test. So I've just had blood test and I'm back on to the five milligrams per day. If you remember when I was eating a lot of steak and I was on five milligrams a day, I overdosed on it. It affected my creatinine, which affected my EGFR, which also had a negative effect on my biological age. So that's it for the supplements that I was taking when I had this blood test done. Let's jump straight into my lipid profile. Much the same profile as it always is. High LDL, 171 up from 167, which also knocks up my total cholesterol. Um, what I do think is important is HDL. You can see there that it's up to 57, which is good. Triglycerides are down, which is good, from 82 to 73. And my VLDL, um, that's a very low density um, Cholesterol is down from 60 to 14. Those are the important markers. And I know people still bang on about LDL as a single marker as being a massive uh, influence on heart disease. Um, and those people really don't like Sean Baker. So he's come out with a, another study um, talking about LDL as a single marker and how other things are more important when it comes to all-cause mortality. I'm going to play that clip now for you. Okay, another study just came out looking at the relationship between high cholesterol and mortality, cardiovascular mortality, total mortality. Uh, it is entitled, The Association Between Hypercholesterolemia and Mortality Risk Among Patients Referred for Cardiac Imaging Test, Evidence of a, quote-unquote, Cholesterol Paradox. And so what they did, uh, this study was, was published uh, in the Journal of Pro Pro uh, Progressive Cardiovascular Disease, uh, main author, Alan Rosansky, primary or senior author, Daniel Berman. And so what they did is they looked at four different groups, 65,000 or so people that were referred to for cardiac imaging. That meant there was something going on in their clinical history that made the, the, the clinician concerned about cardiovascular disease. And so they underwent either coronary artery calcium scanning, which some of you guys are familiar with, especially a CT scan of the coronary vessels looking for calcified plaque. They underwent a, uh, the other test was a CT angiography or a CT, CCTA. Uh, so in the first group, there were 10,000 people. The CCTA group had 31,000 patients. Uh, we had an additional group that underwent something called a SPEC scanning or nuclear SPEC scanning, which is single positron emission. 
uh, computerized tomography, some with uh, known cardio, cardio, cardiovascular disease and others without known cardiovascular disease. So these four groups came out and they looked at the different various factors and what predicted mortality. And the group that had the highest mortality, the ones undergoing spec scanning, so the nuclear imaging study that also had significant known coronary artery disease. These people died at a rate of about 3,000 over the follow-up period, which over that period of time, 3% of the population died. They don't want spec scanning, the coronary artery calcium scan, less than 1%, it was like 0.31% or something like that. So regardless of how many people died in which group, what was what, what the take home message here is that people that had diabetes were more likely to die. It was about, uh, I think it was about an 88% increase in mortality. People that had um, a smoking history had an increase by about 67%. And people with elevated blood pressure had about a 30, 38% increase in mortality rates, okay? So these things all were positively associated with death. Now, when we looked at high LDL cholesterol, what they saw was the opposite effect. In, the, in these particular patients, people with high cholesterol fared better. People with high cholesterol had a lower rate of death, about a 30% or a 29% decrease in the rate of mortality. So again, this is the quote unquote cholesterol paradox. So my blood sugar levels, you can see here, when I was on 500 milligrams of metformin, they were up to six, which is high now. Although here in the Philippines, anything less than 6.5 is classed as okay. Um, I'm now down to 5.8, up from the 5.5 uh, that I was before, but it's back in the blue, which is very good indeed. My average blood glucose, 119.8. So that is now back into the excellent control range, which is also a very welcome score. Liver profile, you can see here, everything pretty much okay, apart from my albumin globulin ratio. It's got here 123 at 1.23, which here in the Philippines, they say is low. It should be at least 1.1. But you can see here the score 0 0.9 when I was in the UAE. They say it's normal. So that one could be normal if I was in the UAE. But now I'm in the Philippines. They're saying it's abnormal. Uh, and this other one, GGT, was 53. That's quite a big jump down to 26, although the, the um, lowest level is 27. So it's only one out. Um, we'll wait and see what happens there with the next blood test in three months time. Moving on to my renal profile, everything here you can see, if it's pink, it's because they've changed the reference range. But everything here is technically in the blue or the pink, which is very good indeed. So let's move on to my thyroid. You can see here all in the pink and blue, so no issues there. I'm gonna move quite quickly through this. I don't, I don't wanna labor these points. If you wanna pause the video and zoom in, because as these tests mount up, the, the, the script is getting smaller and smaller. Um, so you can see all the results. Vitamin D, you can see here, I'm still up in the high 98s, which is, it's not in the toxic range, which is over 100, um, but it's taken quite a big jump since I got here in the Philippines because I've been out in the sun a lot more. Even though I've stopped taking the 10,000 units for two days of the week, it's, it's still gone up. Um, so I'll give it another three months because I've read a few places, it, it does take a couple of months for changes to be seen. If after the next three months there is no change, I might consider dropping down to maybe five days a week of 5,000 international units just to see what happens. But that's it for my vitamin D3. Vitamin B12, you can see here exactly the same as it was three months ago. So well within the reference range, I'm happy with that. Then my total testosterone, I can't get my free tested either here or on the big island. I've got to go to Manila for that. So any time that I do travel to Manila, I will hunt someone down to test my free testosterone. You can see here the reference range 2.8 to 8. Mine is up to 6.19 from 5.44. So I'm happy with my testosterone score for this blood test. So let's look at my iron score. You can see here now two months in a row, that's down to 8. 9.5 is the lowest limit. So um, that wasn't an anomaly. I will now look into, and it's probably to do my diet, I will now look into foods that are higher in iron, to see if I can affect it that way. If none of the foods that are high in iron are available or um, palatable to me, then I'm gonna start looking at probably an iron supplement. Then we look at my C-reactive protein. You can see here, anything less than 10 is good, and they've given me two scores now, 
less than five. Nothing more accurate than that here in the Philippines for some reason, but that's the way it goes. Amelie, as you can see here, exactly the same as it was uh, the last three months. So 63, well within the reference range of 28 to 100. And then my lipase down to 32 from 35, but again, still within the reference range of above 14, all the way up to 280. So my CBC, my complete blood count, you can see here, everything here is in the blue. So no issues with that whatsoever. Again, feel free to pause the video. If you see something I haven't seen, let me know in the comments below. Blood two, uh, you can see here the top five I've got. No issues, they're all in the blue. Um, on the island where I am, they will test these, but they will not for some reason give me these figures. I have to do that on the big island. That test is a little bit more expensive. Let me know in the comments below. Um, are you happy for me to just continue with these blood tests at the top? Or would you like to see all of these ones done in the future so that um, the record is, is more comprehensive? Uh, I'd be interested to see what you say. So my estradiol, you can see here, it's taken quite a big drop from 16.6 down to 9.86. So that's the, the female hormone estrogen. Uh, you can see here when I first had this tested, 41.1. Uh, They've changed the reference range again for some reason. And now it can be up to 42. I think 40 was the number when this was in the red. Um, I started to take dim and it dropped almost immediately. This drop here down from 25 to 16 and then further from 16 to 9.8, I think has been as a result of me changing my brand. When I came to the Philippines, I still had some of the uh, brand I used in the UAE. That's now all gone. So I've been taking this new brand. Maybe that is more potent. I'm not too sure. Um, it can go all the way down to 7.63. I think 9.86 is okay. I'll carry on as I am at the moment. If it drops any further, because I bought quite a few bottles of this DIM, um, th this new brand. If it drops any further, then I may look at reducing that dosage from 600 to 400. And instead of taking it at six in the morning at about eight, uh, sorry, 11.30 to midday, and then before I go to bed with my metformin, I will just take it first thing in the morning, and first thing at night to see if that makes a change. My EGFR, you can see here, is now 93.6. It was 101, which is great. Uh, 93.6, so anything over 90 is normal. That's as a result of me, me reducing my red meat intake since I've got the Philippines, but also because I'm now cycling my creatine. So it's a month on, two months off. Uh, I think all of these highs here, which were leading, which was leading me to believe I had some kind of kidney damage. Um, and this is only estimated, the E in EGFR means estimated, um, was actually because I was eating a lot more red meat and I was supplementing with creatine. I'm now cycling um, creatine and I'm eating a lot less red meat. So it looks as though my, I don't think there was an issue in my kidney function, but it's now well within the normal range so that's good um my urine test i didn't get the urine test done i normally get that done in the second hospital when i turned up they said there was a problem with their um, system or whatever they use for doing it and, and um, they also said that if i was to leave a sample i can't remember the exact phrase they used but the freshness may not have been good enough for the test i'm not sure how long it was going to take them to fix whatever they needed to fix in the laboratory of the person that did it i'm not too sure but if you look at my scores since I started this in 19, uh, sorry, since 2019, nothing has really ever been an issue. This, which is my leukocyte, was positive. That's when I had, um, it was either COVID or it was some kind of chest infection. And this one, which is in the pink, is only because they've changed the reference range. It's still within the reference range. So there's, there's not really an issue there. Um, we'll find out what happens next time when I get my next three monthly uh, urine test. So I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. That's my blood test for November 2023. Um, looking back, I'm pretty happy with all the results. Nothing of any concern for me. With regard to the low iron score, uh, I'm going to look for foods here in the Philippines that are high in iron. If I don't like um, the foods that are high in iron, then I'm going to look at an iron supplement, possibly. Vitamin D. Um, you may remember a while ago I talked about now that I'm settled and I'm not traveling all over the world in my job that we're going to get a dog. We've done that. Um, we walk the dog first thing in the morning. So the sun comes up between 5.30 and 6. We're heading out about 10 past 6. So I'm doing the Andrew Huberman early morning routine. I'm getting sunlight in my eyes for about half an hour, 40 minutes. And then at night, although it's five between five and six as it's getting cooler, 
the sun is still up so i'm getting a lot more sunshine that's probably the reason that my vitamin d is up if that's the case after the next three months then i'm probably going to look at reducing the 5,000 international units per day um the other thing is the urine test i'm not really worried about my urine scores but again we'll see what happens when i get my urine test uh, in three months time